Hey guys, welcome to the Overflow Prophet Ministry channel. My name is Eva and I have a prophetic word and warning for you. It is meant to be an eye opener and a reminder for basically the entire body of Christ based on Matthew 24 in the Bible. And the title of this message is What's the Time? Guys, the Holy Spirit brought to my remembrance two of the most unorthodox things. First was that once popular preschool or kindergarten chant, what's the time, Mr. Wolf, where you would be practicing time when you go one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock in response. So what's the time, Mr. Wolf? And the second thing he brought to my remembrance was that catch line from that um, comedy series from back in the day, Home Improvement, where Tim the Tool Man Taylor used to say, Does anybody know what time it is? And it was kind of weird. It was funny. It was like, Bumblebee and the Transformers, how he used to recite these movie clips and stuff. Anyhow, long story short, guys, after that, it was the message. And know that the Lord has a sense of humor. Get to know him on a personal level. But don't let go of the reverential fear. <laughs> due to him. Anyhow, guys. This was not primarily a message to encourage you to become a friend of God, but it's not a bad way to go. What the message was really to lead up to is the Lord wants to issue a reminder to share it with his church a wake-up call for the body of Christ. It is a marker in time and a signal like the leaves of the fig tree. We know these are the end times and the Lord has given me the understanding that we are in the times described in Matthew 24 in the Bible. It's important to discern the times because and the seasons because, saints, the Lord says in his word that he does nothing on the earth unless he first reveals it to his prophets. Saints, please make the time to read and or listen to the book of Matthew chapter 24 in its entirety and see if you, at this point in time, hold up the Word of God and compare it with your news channels, you will see that, you know, the fake leaves are there. We need to be cognizant of the fact that things are going on that are documented in the Word. The season determines what we do, what we reap, what we sow, how, well, when, and if we rest, what we store, where we go, how we prepare for subsequent seasons and events to come, and pay attention to the seasons, saints. One of the things the Lord wants to communicate to you guys is that if the rapture described in Matthew twenty four thirty one and Mark thirteen twenty seven seem like a fairy tale, note that the precedent has already been set in the Old Testament with Prophet Elijah and in the New Testament with Jesus. If resurrection seems far fetched, please note that. The precedent has already been set 
time and time again, but most notable instance being with Jesus as the Holy Spirit was the only one required there. No prophet, no laying on of hands, no prayer that we know of. J J Jesus was just raised by the Holy Spirit. And Jesus would have called Lazarus out of the grave. So the dead in Christ raising at his call. The precedent has already been set. Could there be a situation where the Lord takes some of us and leaves others? Yes. Look at the first Passover with the Israelites in bondage in Egypt. And if they were not covered by the blood of that spotless lamb at the time, apply to their lentils and doorposts, a type of being covered by the blood of Jesus at that time. If they were disobedient and had not prepared for the coming of the death angel, they would have been visited by death rather than being passed over. Saints, if we're not covered by the blood of Jesus, not literally but spiritually, guess what? We're in danger of being visited. We're in danger of being left behind. Be careful how you think you stand lest you fall. Ask the Lord to search your heart and let you know if you are where he wants you to be spiritually at this time. Adam and Eve were still physically in the garden, but they had fallen and the glory had departed. Don't make the mistake of thinking that your presence or your service or your gifts or your faithfulness to a ministry or a cause or a charity guarantee you a spot in heaven. Being a good person does not guarantee you a spot in heaven. Only a personal relationship acceptance of Christ as Lord and Savior. That relationship guarantees you a spot in heaven. Nothing else. The Lord said to his church that he would spew out the lukewarm and that there would be those that ate and drank with him to whom he would say, I know you not. The Lord desires that none should perish. He chastens whom he loves. Please take the opportunity to do a self check and rededicate your life, your heart, your mind, soul, and strength to Christ if necessary. And practice loving your neighbor as yourself. Remember, the heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? Stay blessed, saints. Remember, the Lord is preparing his church for his return. He's preparing us to be a bright, no spot, no wrinkle. And we need to not only be prepared, but to help others be prepared. Amen? Due to the urgency of this message, I need you to share the message, pass it on, tell a friend, tell a saint. The word needs to get out. Oh, and guys, there's a part two. So, I'll be releasing that shortly. Lord willing. God bless. Bye-bye.